I'm Ambaya, co-founder of Drinking Dribbling and uh, illustrator. Today we'll talk about these uh, brush pens. How to kind of use them in the beginning and I'll, I'll show you some tips and tricks. What is a brush pen? So a brush pen is just a literal brush. So um, it has a tip like a normal brush. So if I use it in here, you can see it's just a brush tip. Um, the cool thing about these is they have cartridges that you can kind of refill yourself or you can just buy these and they're usually around three to four euros and last about, if you draw a lot or sketch a lot, about, about a month, I'd say. Or if you're sketching like a couple of times a week, maybe half a year. You have uh, this compartment here, which fills up with ink when you press it. You can kind of control how much ink you want in them. The cartridge is directly connected to the tip. The problem with these is that the ink almost stays the same all the time, depending on how full your cartridge is. And with these, it's kind of cool, like you, when you take a closer look here, when I press, you can see the ink is kind of filling up. And now the ink is in this compartment. I can use it until this one's empty. And I have two different textures. So I have a kind of a full dripping pen or like brush uh, where I have a lot of ink. Or um, if the compartment gets empty, I almost have like this dry brush ink tip. So which is amazing. So you can kind of use it for both ways. And especially some parts where you can kind of go over the hair like here. And it's just a way to kind of uh, control some of the lines uh, like here as well dries up and you can kind of play around with that a little bit where you have a kind of crisp line because uh, you have a lot of ink in here or you kind of use up the ink and you use um, the dry brush almost to kind of convey texture and, and a lot of uh, form really quickly. When you use a normal fine liner or when you use a pencil you usually have a very small and detailed tip which is super nice. Problem with that is you kind of can't really go over big forms like here, you know, or you can kind of um, fill out big spaces or you have uh, different kinds of lines where you can play with, with line weight. So with these brush pens, you have that. So you have a very s fine tip, which is just uh, the end of the brush pen, or you can use the full brush to kind of easily go through and get my big shapes done and play around with uh, the thickness of the line really easily and play around with uh, line weight and a little bit of depth. So the main thing that a lot of people struggle with, that I struggled with in the beginning with these brush pens is kind of controlling the thickness of the line and controlling the distance from brush pen to paper in order to kind of control it in the beginning because usually you can kind of, you can kind of work like working like this, you know, but then the problem is it's really hard to like have a certain amount of distance to paper in order to kind of prevent that or kind of Give yourself some some tips as uh, like some some help you kind of have to control the line like this the problem is it's really hard sometimes especially when you want to work fine to have the distance right so what i do is i'll use uh, my middle finger and i kind of put my middle finger on the paper like this so what it does is pencil like my, my finger kind of creates distance now and i don't have to control it like with my hand so I'll just put my pencil here or my brush pen and see here, I can easily create very fine lines and then at the same time go from thick to thin. So it kind of just moves up and down from here. When I draw, I only use my arm. So, so if I want to draw, I can actually just go really light and use these lines kind of, you know, so I can See so yeah, here, and now I can just like go over and use these lines like that. And the, like the thing with the smudging is, you kind of have to take a look at the paper, uh, how good it is at soaking up um, the ink. Sometimes you can do that. Sometimes it doesn't really work because the paper just soaks up the ink too fast. So uh, maybe. First, check it out if it works really well on your paper or not. Is there any recommendation you would give for the paper in special? Um, it's, I think there are a lot of papers that are actually kind of good. What I like to use is the one from Hahnemühle. Um, this one is actually it's just 120 grams, but on the other drawings it's the one for uh, 190. It's called sketching paper. It's a good price for like, the quality you get. 
problem with these is you can't really smudge that much because um, the ink kind of just soaks up really quick so you kind of have to rely more on the dry tip like draw and then when you feel like oh the ink is kind of drying up uh, or like it's emptying in this cartridge in, in the front I'll wait until I can use these parts or you kind of have to work fast so when I'm working with fast I mean it's like you still have a lot of ink in there so as you can see it's still very crisp um, but in order to kind of create this dry, I can, this dry ink, I can just work quick. And it kind of reminds everyone of this, you know, the Japanese calligraphy style where you can just work fast. In order to use that in a way is when you have live drawing, let's just pretend uh, we have a new live drawing model in front. And she's standing there and then I kind of want to create a really fast line. I almost have to work fast. And it's not super precise in a way, or it's hard in the beginning to kind of con control this, but especially when you live drawing uh, with short poses, you can kind of, um, you can see it in the examples like here as well, you can kind of create form uh, really quick. And for short poses, it's in general just kind of getting the gesture right when you have two minutes or three minutes. And then it's more about um, having the contrast between like these big bold strokes where you kind of work with the silhouette and then in between you work with kind of details so you have the contrast between like these very bold strokes uh, where you just focus on the form and then in the middle or just here as well like that to have some kind of detail because you kind of have to prioritize what's important for a pose or for a sketch because you can work with these things and sketch this as well but then you have to kind of think, okay, what is important for the sketch? What do I want to kind of convey with it? Another thing that I uh, like to do is, it kind of it came because I was kind of lazy or I, I had too much anxiety to kind of uh, do a full pose live drawing or like, okay, I, I hated drawing hands and arms. And I was like, okay, I kind of want to balance it out because everyone usually says, oh, you kind of have to work outside your comfort zone. But I think it... It's a bit different with the brush pens. When you only work out of your comfort zone, you'll kind of hate working with these. I mean, I got one for my girlfriend like one and a half years ago uh, as a birthday present. And I was like, oh yeah, nice brush pens, awesome. And I picked it up and I started working with it and was like, okay, this is the worst. I don't want to do this. And I'll just put it down for a month. And everyone probably did collages. You cut out things, you put them together and then you stack them up. Like sketches, it's almost the same thing. But this time you're not stacking it up because you can't overlay it but you're queuing things. So the first thing you sketch is in the front and everything you sketch is just behind. And then you can treat uh, the whole paper like a, like a Photoshop layer, but you're just queuing everything. And then you cut out things that you want to draw. You can draw, but at the same time, maybe you want to put on some things that you kind of don't want to draw. So you basically choose the fights you want to fight. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You kind of choose the fights you want to fight, but at the same time, sometimes you're like, maybe I'll go for the, for the boss. <laughs> And you get punched and then you just go for another one. Okay. <laughs> so I started like, uh, as, as an example here, when you take a look at this, uh, there was a live drawing class last week. Um, I kind of drew the, all the people who were at the front row and then I was like, oh no, I, I kind of want to do some live drawing as well. But I already did a lot of faces and I, I'm super lazy. I don't want to do this anymore because I had that already and I felt, okay, like I don't want to do this. So I kind of just drew the model and I just let out the, uh, left out the faces on the heads and I kind of uh, treated her hair as the negative space. So this is again another challenge for me. I was like, okay, cool. I mean, I don't want to draw heads, but I still want to make it kind of interesting for me. Imagine all her hair, as you can see here, fell behind her back. That's the negative space. That's subtracted from the figure. And I want to draw that. And then again, I, I just don't want to draw one pose and do it, take another paper and do another pose. I kind of want to stack them up. So I have like a collage of these Greek statues almost. So it's, I started off with that one and that, and then the paper kind of became full. So I kind of just queued them behind. It's a bit awkward in the beginning because you still have to, especially when you have the pose here, it goes like that or like that. You kind of have to build like a mind map and imagine, okay, what is behind there? And then at the same time, you can kind of hide mistakes as well. If there's a part that you don't want to draw, cue it behind another drawing. So in this one, it was like, ah, no, I can't do the full pose, but I really like her hands in this pose and the arms because she was holding like a stick. 
I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna draw these hands because I can't fit the whole page in because um, this is the one thing I want to kind of draw in. So I just did that part. And you can actually do it with everything. So as an example, when you have it here, I kind of only, I didn't want to do live drawing on that day, but I felt like, okay, if I come here and don't do anything, I'm, it's gonna be kind of sad because I mean, there's people here and they all are drawing, so they're perfect models as well. I did one pose here from the model, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna draw the people here again, but um, I don't wanna draw their legs. So I was like, oh, perfect, you know, but why don't just kind of just do this, cut it out, kind of stack it up. I kind of still challenge myself because I had a lot of faces and portraits and people, and then I kind of did some sketches as well in between because um, all the other people, they only I saw them partially or the position was too hard for me. Then I just kind of hit some sketches between them. We had a super cool pose, a new model, it was super interesting. And I came to the last sketch here and then was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna start here with the arm. Oh no, and then I kind of drew this and the arm became super long and I was like, oh no, I kind of fucked up this whole sketch. I mean, I can just kind of save my mistake and just kind of creatively work through here. How do I kind of collage things out. Um, I mean, there are two different ways, or I mean, it's just one way, with two different approaches. First thing is I, I kind of single out certain features that I want to draw. So let's just pretend, for example, you're sitting behind someone and he or she is sketching and you don't want to draw the model because you're frustrated that you, I mean, it's not working very well. Maybe you just want to sketch them, but the pose is super hard. But what you can do, maybe, you're, uh, maybe they're just standing there. Let's pretend um, she has like, or he, has a huge sleeve on, and you kind of just put it in like that, and here, you can just like that, and so then I just kind of just cut out that one piece that I kind of like because I actually like this position a lot when people are uh, sitting in front of me and they're sketching because this, this arm kind of has this really nice flow. And you just kind of work with that. So now I have one piece that I already kind of put on paper, which is just an arm that I cut out from. So maybe he has a pose where he kind of does this typical thing on live drawing where they uh, pose up the forearm and put their kind of hand on their hips, you know, like this, where they You did, and it kind of vanishes behind that. And I actually want to draw that only. So when you know, see, it's like that. They don't have to be perfect. It's more about uh, having a nice flow and kind of putting them together. And it's no pressure because it's only one piece that you kind of feel comfortable with. And that's enough. You kind of just layer it around. Okay, I want to be. I want to have cool arm positions. I just looked up some some photos of people online doing things and I just drew the arms. It doesn't really matter like how precise you are. And in the end, even if each particular sketch isn't that good, the chili effect will kind of save everything. <laughs> so like here as well, I kind of drew people here. Um, that was Hannah, it was Helen. They were just working on the laptops and I drew the whole thing and I kind of liked the arm positions and like the shapes that the pullover kind of created. But then I was like, oh no, I, I kind of have that, but I don't want to draw the face. What if just, I fuck it up? And I really didn't want to do it. I was like, you know what, why just cut it off and draw the plants that we here have at, at, the, at the studio, you know? And just create like pot heads, you know? Just human pot heads. <laughs> and just again, just another play around uh, having to work with the thing that I like. Myself, some space where I can just have a little bit of fun and drawing plants is super forgiving because they don't have to be perfect. I kind of created something that I really like a lot. What would you say are the biggest pros and cons to working with a brush pen? So, um, the pros, like I said, you have two different tips in one pen. You mm -hmm. have a fine pen uh, tip, you have a broad pen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, efficiency. Efficiency, yeah. You can work really fast. But at the same time, because uh, it kind of, I mean, the pencil, like the brush pen kind of wants to move over the paper and everything is about the flow. And um, at the same time, it's kind of inaccurate sometimes because um, um, you have to work fast in a way to make it fun for me it's the way mm. um, but it's, sometimes it takes away a lot of a lot of precision that you have with a normal pencil so you need a lot of control actually you, you need a lot of control but then at the same time again you need to kind of let go because mm. when you want to 
when you think too much about it, I mean, you probably had it all. You know, you started sketching, and then you think about too, too much about the sketch, like, oh, this is gonna be weird. Oh no, this is gonna, oh, this is not going the way I want it. And then you have this weird anxiety that you wanna fuck up the sketch. Mm. And especially when you come to a certain time um, where you're almost done with the sketch, and you just wanna do some touch-ups, some here and there, but then you don't wanna fuck it up. And then you just leave it, or you just overdo it, and it destroys the whole thing. And this is like, this is the beginning of the end, because um, everyone who wants to draw, or like wants to create, you wanna come, come like into, into the zone. You wanna be in the flow where you don't think about drawing, you just do it, sketching. That goes and comes with the brush pen. You, you kind of have to let go and not think about the drawing and just kind of enjoy it. Definitely should check out Bayer's workshop because we did some very fun exercises yeah. I don't want to spoil <laughs> in here, which make you really get loose and get a good understanding and grip for these brush yeah. pens. Definitely check out the workshop when it's available and again, again check it out and really have a fun day on yeah, working with sure, the brush sure. pen. If not, you can still come uh, for some live drawing sketches and, and, and live drawing sessions. I'll be here as well. Uh, thanks a lot, Bayer, for taking your time with no us. No problem. Just follow me yeah. if you have questions. You can write me. I put all the links in the description Perfect. below. Or you just write a comment under Janos' video. Yes, and, and subscribe! <laughs> <laughs> Bayer's well trained. Yeah, yeah well trained. You, you received public, <laughs> public training. Yeah, it is. It is. He's a natural.